Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the final plenary session of JGF Summit 2021. For those who have joined us for the duration of uh, the summit, it's been an exceptional three days. Um, I've been doing this uh, for four years now with JGF, and this has been my best one so far. I've been attending conferences for decades, and I think that some of the sessions that I have been uh, privileged to, to watch and be part of are, are definitely in my top 10 of all time. It, it really has been an incredible privilege uh, with so many different aspects that have allowed us to get insight into this wicked problem of quality education, uh, to inspire us and to, uh, and to grow our sense of purpose and agency as we look towards the kind of impact we wanting to make in the future. So it brings us to the last session. And uh, for those of us uh, from, uh, from the public who are joining, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for taking the time uh, to come and listen today. Um, we have about 150 uh, uh, students and staff members uh, joining the session uh, from the summit, but you are equally welcome into our space. Before we launch into today's session, though, we have some exciting uh, housekeeping to do. Now, I know housekeeping isn't normally exciting, but trust me, this one is. We had the most wonderful uh, uh, session last night. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it was because I'm going to ask Ancha to do that, to explain what happened last night. And Ancha is then going to make some announcements about the winners of what took place. So Ancha, can I invite you into the space and uh, take it away? Thank you very much, Jeremy. Good afternoon, everyone. Last night, myself, Matago, and Mpo had the pleasure of being the judges for the JGF Summit Creative Cooking Session. For the virtual creative cooking session, a call was made to the whole community for people to sign up for the cook-off, MasterChef style. We had 22 of our candidate fellows sign up and four our staff of our staff members. So that made 26 contestants. They received a brief to use only five ingredients from a provided list and had 45 minutes to cook and plate for presentation. The judges and cheerleaders who joined the session um, had an opportunity to interact with all the contestants throughout their cooking time in their kitchen. The dishes were presented and unfortunately we could not taste but we judge with our eyes. There were five categories, best presentation, best use of ingredients, a dish that judges would most likely eat, highest scoring staff member across all criteria, and the last one, the People's Choice Award. All the winners that I'm about to announce will win a JGF apron, like the one that I'm wearing, and a Mr. Price home voucher. Without further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for from last night, the prize for the best presentation goes to Olile Tamban. Yay, drum roll for the yes. next one. Oh, awesome. Yes. The prize for the best use of ingredients goes to Cornelia Weber. Yes, yes, yes. The third one, a dish that the judges would most likely eat, goes to Angela Houston Brown. Well done, Angela. And the fourth one, the highest scoring staff member across all criteria. We need a huge drum roll for this one. It's none other than our director, Jeremy Gibbon. Oh, yes. We love to see it. Our inspiration. The final, final prize that was voted on um, Mentimeter with our independent um, judges, the People's Choice, goes to two people. We have Chloe Saunders and Miara Kada. Well done to everyone. Thank you to all contestants and a huge thank you to the ENL team, Heather Redfern and Johanna for making this happen. Thank you so much, Jeremy. 
Well, Ancha, now that I've uh, been awarded a prize, I'm too excited to continue with the session, I think. I'm, uh, I can't wait to get my JGF uh, uh, apron. That was the only reason. <laughs> thank you, Ancha, thank you to you and Matabo and Paul, ENL team, uh, Heather and Joanna for putting that together. Um, members of the public, uh, you wouldn't have seen that last night, but it was an absolutely fabulous uh, uh, bit of fun. A bit like the mystery box uh, on MasterChef, if you've watched that. Um, but uh, thanks for uh, thanks for all of that. All right, let's uh, shift our focus to um, today's uh, final plenary session. You know, we've uh, uh, we've dealt with a lot this weekend, but I want to bring us back to our core founding principle at JGF. And our core founding principle is that the lever of change in an education system is the teacher. We have right from the beginning said the teacher is the critical factor within the system that creates change. An education system cannot overcome the quality of its teaching core. It is the people within the system that are going to make the change. And so from early days, we had a strong connection uh, with the Vaki Foundation and in particular with their Global Teacher Prize. Now, if you're not aware of what the Global Teacher Prize is, it's an annual uh, prize that is awarded um, and thousands and thousands of teachers apply. And uh, one, uh, uh, the, uh, the top 50 are announced and then the top 10 are uh, um, in the good old days before we everything was online we're, we're flown through to dubai for the final uh, announcement of the uh, single best teacher for that particular year and we just love that for me it's the it's the oscars of teaching it's the rock star teacher that is put up there now of course an education system doesn't revolve around one person just because one person is excellent but what it does is it represents the celebration of excellence in teaching. It says, wow, there's an amazing teacher. And remember, this school also has a whole lot of amazing teachers. And let's strive towards that kind of excellence. And so we love the Global Teacher Prize. Right from word go, we've used the videos. We've engaged with, uh, 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 with people who have been connected to the Global Teacher Prize. And we are the richer for it. And we do it unashamedly. And right from the beginning, we were incredibly privileged to, uh, to meet and, uh, and, and subsequently become a firm friends with Marjorie Brown. Uh, Marge uh, is head of history at Rodine School. And uh, Marge is going to uh, be one of the guests that I, I introduce you to a little bit later. And she's going to be hosting the session for us to have a conversation with the 2019 Global Teacher Prize winner, who is Peter Tabici. Um, and and we, we are just, we are blown away by the privilege of having two exceptional teachers come and sit within our space and engage so that we are able to listen and to learn from them. So to set the scene, I'm going to play a little video quickly. Uh, it has some snippets from the 2018 award ceremony. And look carefully, you'll see Marge. Uh, they line up all the teachers uh, in a row. And uh, Marge is right on the, uh, the far right as we look at it, the far left uh, on the stage. So don't miss her. Um, and then the some from the 2019 award ceremony and a little bit of background and context to understand uh, the work that, uh, that Peter Tabici does and the context that he works in. And after that, I'll invite uh, Marge and Peter to come on stage uh, virtually and, uh, and to then uh, have a conversation. But let's start with um, a little bit of uh, video action and uh, see what it was like to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, Good evening and welcome to the 2018 Global Teacher Prize Award Ceremony. We are lucky and absolutely honored to have 10 remarkable teachers here with us today. I have to apologize. I was tasked with having the trophy ready. Yo, yes, His Highness is looking at me. I need the trophy. Don't worry, I'm on my way, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the fastest man in the world, Lewis Hamilton! This year, the announcement is part of a world record. The largest hashtag formation in the world. It's 
2018 winner of the Global Teacher Prize, Andrea Zafiraku. Ladies and gentlemen, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Mr. Sonny Barkey. Thank you very much. The winner of the Global Teacher Prize for 2019 is Peter Tabachi. I was excited. I just found myself shedding tears. I shed tears because uh, I was recalling what all the challenges uh, I've gone through and what the challenges that the community I serve, the kind of challenges they, they go through. So it, it reminded me, uh, it, it was a kind of a quick reminder of what I'm, uh, what's happening back at home. Uh, like now to start with, um, think of uh, making my school like if it's possible, it comes like a model school where the other schools from Africa and the rest of the world, they later aspire to be in that kind of a school. And I'll be able to come up with the projects, projects that will benefit the students and trying to address most of these challenges which they face. Students that I teach, they come from very poor backgrounds, and then the, the school doesn't have uh, enough facilities, poor, in, there's poor infrastructure, uh, like now we don't have a kitchen, we don't have uh, the library, all of these sorts of facilities. Yeah, And then at the same time we have a shortage of teachers. To make learning interesting, I had to come up with the ways, I have to be like be innovative. And one of the things that I did was to motivate students to come up with innovations, uh, participating in uh, science fairs, and they have uh, really done so well, they are shining, uh, qualified even to participate at the national level and also at the international level. And then uh, to address the problem of the teacher shortage and also to make learning interesting, I integrate ICT. We have a, a projector, we have a, a desktop computer. So um, I get material from online, but unfortunately accessing internet is a big challenge. So I have to go to the nearby cyber cafes, which are it's a quite some distance, and uh, download videos and the only content. And then later on I use uh, those projectors for PowerPoint presentation. At times, they don't have meals at home, and when they have not taken breakfast, the level of concentration is very low. And that's why the school has decided to give them porridge, at least to make them uh, really have that concentration in class. I lost the mother at the age of 11 and took over everything, was doing everything for the family, giving us the best education, instilling moral and Christian value in us. And he taught me to be alicerient, selfless, and uh, uh, have humility. Told me that if I am humble, I'll be able to move very far. And he has been emphasizing that one for a long time. And it's just now this happening, winning this, it's just like a dream which has now turned into a reality.
What an absolute uh, uh, privilege it is for me to uh, introduce both Marge Brown and Peter Tabici. And uh, Marge, can I invite you to unmute, turn your video on, and uh, come and uh, join us on Center Stage. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I do have my video on. And um, thank you for inviting me. It's an incredible privilege to be here today and to share this, this stage with Peter. So I'm going to then uh, hand over to Marge, uh, if you don't mind inviting Peter in. Um, candidate fellows, while Marge is getting set, uh, can I suggest uh, that you turn your uh, videos off if you happen to have them on? Uh, and then on the little uh, video button, the up arrow, if you go to video settings, uh, and then just select for yourself uh, uh, hide non-video participants, and that will then remove your videos from uh, from the view. And uh, Marge and Peter, if you can turn your videos on, and then you'll take center stage. Thank you. Over to you, Marge. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy, and welcome to Peter Tabici. Um, Peter, do you, are you unmuted? And can you take the stage? Thank you. Thank you much and the rest for the invitation. It's my pleasure to participate in the JGF Summit. And I hope that at the end of this, we are going to share, um, we are going to learn. So I'm privileged to participate. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Peter, um, I haven't really been able to say this to you on screen. I, we, we, we congratulated you when you won the prize, but just Two years on, it still strikes me so much um, what a privilege it was to see you achieve what you did in 2019 for yourself and for this continent and for teachers in the world. I'm watching the Olympics at the moment, and I'm just so aware of the parallels of you getting the gold, except um, getting the gold as a teacher, I think, has enormous inspiration for everyone, every budding teacher and every existing teacher in the world. And I, I just wanted to ask you how you came to apply for this prize, um, because even in the chat, I saw um, some of the um, audience watching that and going, I'm the next Global Teach Prize winner. So can you inspire these young teachers or teachers in the making and, and, and give us the story of how you came to apply for this Global Teacher Prize? Thank you, uh, much Brown. Uh, I want to thank God because of this uh, opportunity today and the many gifts and uh, uh, what has happened. So I don't want to say that I'm special. I'm just representing the great work which people are doing, great work which teachers are doing around the world. And uh, uh, you cannot agree with me that they are transforming the world. In, you know, everyone is trying their level best to change the transform the world. And uh, therefore, I want to thank all the teachers of the world, all the educators, everyone who is supporting education. And um, that is quite, you know, uh, great work. I also want to thank my students. They are the ones who deserve this, uh, you know, all of these recognitions. It's through them that I, I came to much. I did not been for, you know, what they are doing, their struggles, uh, I could not have appeared anywhere. Therefore, in a special way, I want to thank them. And uh, after now, you know, I started from quite, you know, a very humble background. Uh, I, I was doing my work just in an ordinary way. I didn't know that there, there are recognitions, there are awards, there are, you know, there is this kind of appreciation. But in the process of doing what I was doing, I was getting people, uh, you know, saying, what you're doing is inspiring us. And then in the process, uh, you know, a friend was nominating me and uh, they, they were also encouraging me to apply for the Global Teacher Prize. And that, therefore, that's how I came to participate in the Global Teacher Prize. And uh, uh, actually, there are friends who are participating uh, uh, in Africa, and uh, in the process of participating, they encourage me to apply. They, 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 they say that, yes, we are applying, we are participating, but we also think that you can also, if you participate, uh, you know, 
you stand you stand at a chance of, you know of getting this recognition at first to me you know it was like a dream you know considering where i come from my you know my story what i've gone through and what i'm doing i thought you know this cannot happen because uh, i remember the previous year uh, it was won by someone outside africa you know people uh, attends people with high profiles you know i used to read even the profile of uh, march brown you know i thought this cannot come to me but later on it happened therefore i'm very thankful thank you well we're very thankful peter because I think you stand head and shoulders above most of us. Um, I was so struck by the constant um, reference to service in your life and um, the choice that you made to move away from private school education into state school education and make a difference where it matters most. And I wondered if you could outline for us just some of the challenges that you faced within your Carico school that you landed up in. And, and then from that, what you did to make a difference and, and, and just how that attracted the attention of, of, of the judges. Thank you. Uh, uh, I can say that uh, I believe that everyone has a role to play in the society, transforming the society. Transforming the society is not just, uh, you know, something should be left to only the uh, the people uh, in the high positions, you know, the people in the, you know, in the management and administration, all of us are leaders. And therefore, that's what I believe in, that we have a contribution to make. And therefore, let's do what you are doing. Do it to the level best uh, with passion, commitment, education. You know, we don't have to be followed. You have to be self-driven. And... Uh, uh, that's what has been driving me to do what I'm doing. I was initially working in a private school and then, uh, you know, looking at the neighboring schools, I thought that they were going through a number of challenges. And therefore I decided to join uh, more from the private school, which was well equipped, had most of the facilities to that uh, neighboring school, which is a, a public school has challenges. And I felt by working in this uh, school, which has many challenges, I'll be, you know, I'll be able to give my contribution because the students here go through the same challenges that I went through when I was growing up. And I felt that this is the best place where I'll be able to, you know, uh, be able to make a difference. And some of the challenges that they go through is that the uh, majority come from very humble backgrounds and they, some uh, have, you know, single parents and they, uh, there's food insecurity, so it means at home they don't they don't get you know the families are not able to put the the, the food on the table, and then at the same time uh, you know they have to walk for long distances to school, and then at school we didn't have facilities. I used to say that we didn't have facilities, but right now I it's so much has happened. If you come to my school, I think all what I was saying the challenges it's like we have so many people have come forward to you know address all of those challenges. Almost 95, nine, more than 90% of those challenges have been addressed. But I think this should not just happen only in my school. Uh, this is the same story all over Africa that there are so many challenges. But, uh, you know, despite the challenges, I saw enthusiasm, you know, uh, you know, these young people have dreams, have the great potential. And that's what really encouraged me. That's what motivated me even to keep doing, you know, giving them the best. And uh, I believed in their great potential because I believe that every child has a gift. Every child has, you know, uh, can be the best if they are given the opportunity. And because of believing in them, I saw them, you know, achieving so much. Like in the year 2017, uh, I, I mentored students in STEM and they came up with the science projects that enabled them to shine even in nationally, you know, something that used to be only be done by this big school, the national schools, the, you know, these, uh, you know, schools of high categories. And then in the year 2019, our students, another group of the were girls, also made it all the way to the international from such a, you know, a school in a rural area set up and uh, all the way to the international and uh, not just participating at the international level, they were, they won in their category 
they were device, they had a device uh, a, a device uh, that can help the blind you know people with the uh, this kind of hearing impairment to be able to measure a distance and i feel proud of what they are doing i feel so happy when i see my students uh, succeeding and i think this is what put me on the spotlight and uh, it attracted many people to also nominate me and that's why i came to you know a, a, a match but i was just down there I, I was not even known anywhere and i think that a teacher has been you know has been recognized it's not just about myself Peter Tabichi. it's about you know a teacher who has been given this recognition thank you thank you for that peter and you know i i think many people focus on two things about you getting this award the one is that you even before the award, you were giving 80% of your salary to the, the students. There was such a high level of food insecurity. But um, also if people focus on your science prizes and being able to achieve these awards with few resources, which is incredibly inspirational. But what inspired me most of all was your peace club. And coming from a country, South Africa, where there are so many different cultural groups and tensions and the importance of overcoming the history of apartheid in our country and the, the, the community tensions we face and that spilled over a few weeks ago. I was so touched by your peace club and, and maybe you could just outline a little bit about what led you to create that peace club. Okay, thank you. Uh, myself, uh, I, where I work is not where I was born. Uh, my home is uh, very far from here, and um, uh, in my country, we have so many, uh, you know, people uh, come from different cultural backgrounds, uh, and there's uh, that diversity. And when I joined this uh, kind of new environment, I felt like there were differences. There are differences in terms of, uh, you know, uh, culture, in terms of, you know, uh, just there were so many differences and i felt like what is it can be done you know to unite these people unfortunately i didn't have enrolled in the in the way in, in the community okay i i could as well participate in the community but my immediate role kind of duty was in the school that's where you find me most of the time and i felt like i'll start making a difference in terms of promoting peace uniting these people from where i start from my classroom with my students within the school and then I'll be able to do that, you know, that can be spread now beyond the school in, in, into the immediate community and it can as well inspire other people even outside the school. And that's what I did, that's what motivated me to uh, start the Peace Club. And the Peace Club was just uh, uh, having students join and I got the support of the school administration and working with other teachers. And we, whenever we met, we could have debates, you know, discussing about uh, how, you know, different people, how we can work together. And then also we could do things like uh, environmental conservation, planting of trees. We could talk about the climate change. And then uh, uh, we could also, uh, you know, students could propose ways on how differences that exist, how can that be avoided so that the main thing here, you know, the main idea is to uh, see themselves as one people, you know, they are all, you know, regardless of these differences, at the end of it, they are all, uh, you know, they, they are, they are all, uh, you know, the same people, uh, regardless of these differences. So in other words, I was enhancing the global citizenship and uh, I, I'm very proud, I, I was very happy at the end of that uh, so much was uh, achieved. And at the moment, that's what I give a priority. And uh, we have seen that the students are now accepting themselves as, you know, as people of, you know, who shares, you know, people who share the common good regardless of those differences that exist so that uh, they are able to promote those values, you know, values of, uh, you know, respecting one another, appreciating everyone regardless of those differences. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And I, I, I think that's such a good idea to create peace clubs. And I think it's something that could really form a model, Peter, for, for, for many countries and for many schools. And um, I just, I wondered if you could also 
you know, you've spoken about science, you've spoken about the peace clubs, and I want to go just a little bit further beyond the walls of your school to what you then started working with uh, in terms of agriculture and the broader community in terms of food insecurity. And um, you've, you've already said that, you know, the peace went beyond your school and your class. And could you explain, I think this also touches so much on environmentalism. Yeah, thank you. So when I said when I joined the school, I saw that the students are going through many challenges and I was touched. And that's like, I felt like that's what I was going through. And uh, my role as a teacher was not just to be in class, just be in the four world classroom, lecturing, just talking to them. I felt like this is just, I'm not making any difference. Because at the end of it, students come back to me, they tell me that, you know, I was also in the Department of Guidance and Counseling, and what they were sharing with me, you know, could make even you uh, make you even shed tears. They go through a number of challenges at home, they don't have food, they, they you know, there's domestic, you know, <laughs> you know, differences and all of that. And then I feel like if I continue my, my role as a teacher is just to just to teach and then go back home, I not be able to you know transform the lives of these uh, uh, students. So that's how I came, you know. Uh, to uh, also think on how I can also go beyond the, you know, the, the classroom and even reach out to their homes and uh, I was facing their families and every, whenever I had the time over the weekends and during the whole day I could face their families and that's how I came to, you know, uh, uh, work with them, especially in agriculture because that, 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 that is the only area that can like will make me work closely with them. And uh, I feel like because the, the majority, uh, there's a big challenge of food insecurity, I feel like if they, engage, they are engaged in agriculture, then that will be the best way. And that, therefore, that's how I came to uh, engage the, uh, both the parents and even the students in, in terms of uh, farming. And uh, whenever they do the, that, they could teach them on how to plant the, you know, just basic things about uh, you know, plant, uh, kitchen gardening, planting of trees just at home. And then I saw that uh, it, it was not only a way of addressing food insecurity. At the end of it, you know, I felt like it was a great way. It was enhancing the, the interaction between myself and the students. The students that I had visited their homes, we came to be great friends and, uh, you know, it enhanced that, you know, that uh, that relationship, and uh, it was uh, quite a great, uh, a great way. And not only the students, but even the community, they, they, they embraced the whole idea, and the whole thing was working so well. Uh, yeah, that's how I came to, yeah, I came to really like that community work, yeah. I, I think it's, that's profound, Peter, that you are not seeing students just as people in a class, that you're seeing with them within the context of their family and their family challenges. And um, I, I wondered if you could now unpack what difference you've been able to make with the prize money, because I know you said that you wanted to use that million dollars to transform the educational lives of Kenyans. And let's go a little bit beyond your own community then. Well, let's start with you, your school, but what have you been able to do with that prize money within your country? Thank you. Uh, at first, I was wondering what is it I'm going to do with this, uh, you know, considering that, uh, uh, you know, it's not, uh, the pressure is not just, uh, you know, at first there was an excitement, but uh, I'm also a Franciscan brother and uh, I don't have a, a family. I don't have, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the needs, it's like, myself I, it's not like i should not put my needs first i feel like putting the needs of the people that i serve first will be will be okay will be that will be the priority and that's what i started doing and that's what i'm currently doing and uh, there are many challenges as i as i said there are many challenges in terms of, of a crowded classrooms there was no internet there was no library there was no you know all roads were very poor but right now as we speak all what I wanted to do is like has been done. You have, you have seen many people who have come forward and they are, they are supporting me because whenever I start doing it, 
you find that I don't have enough money. The, the, the money is not enough, like in terms of constructing the roads. So I'm so happy that right now, if you are coming from the nearby town to my school, it has all been tarmacked. And you see, it's, I was wondering how could this be done? But right now, and if you have ever watched no videos and you could see all the roads were very poor, but right now, if you come to my school, nowhere you will get, you know, muddy bottles, they are all tarmacked. And then the other thing I wanted to, uh, to also do is uh, to enhance ICT, uh, you know, uh, computer lab. And that could have, you know, I could have used a lot of money, but right now I came, uh, you know, there are people who have come forward and they have already done that. We have a computer lab in my school and it is internet and uh, all those what you think. And then even the classrooms, we have enough of them. So it's like something that really uh, inspired many people and they're supporting that. So I tried but they come and support and they, we do it more and it's really helping not only my school but even the lives of the people in the local community like now the construction of the roads and then we have some other projects on farming so those farming uh, uh, you know agriculture projects they also help the people in the immediate community i'm so happy to see this happening I'm not saying that it is happening because of, okay, I, I don't want to say it's because of me, but I know it's because it's a great recognition. I want to thank God and I want to thank those people who have, who have supported me to do this. And uh, my dream is just to inspire, to have a positive impact, not just in my school, my own village, but even beyond. How can this be also inspire, you know, how can this be done, uh, you know, beyond, beyond this? And therefore, after this, in the next, in the coming years, I also think of ways on how this can also be taken to the other areas, not to just be, not only just be through doing it, but also how can this can inspire someone so that the people in the other areas can also do the same. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Peter. And as you as you speak about this, so you've been able to change the resources within your area. But you did a lot, even without resources. And I'm sure that one of the big contributions you can make beyond your school and your community is to mentor other teachers. And I wondered if you could describe to us how important you think the role of teachers are and whether you've got involved in teacher mentoring in your country. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And I think Global Teacher Praise is all about uh, recognizing teachers and everyone around the world, you know, you all, they, they can all agree, people can agree with me that teachers do great work. And uh, uh, my own father was a teacher and even many of my family members are teachers. And I feel like they're doing great work. And uh, in a way they mentored me, they gave, you know, they instilled me in values, you know, I learned so much from them. So they mentored me in a way, a great way. And it's the same, it's now my turn to do the same, I, I should not just be selfish with what I know. I, I should I, I look for ways on how the same can also, the other teachers can also have the same in terms of, you know, sharing with them the best teaching practices. And what is it, what is it teaching all about? What is education all about? Is it just going to class and then teaching? And no, it's beyond that. So, uh, and I feel like uh, it's great to mentor better teachers. And I have so many of them. I currently working with and they you know I feel so happy to work with them we work as a team I don't work as as an individual everything that I do or that I've achieved is because of working as a team I believe in a, uh, in a teamwork uh, collaboration and all of that if you you do a, 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 whatever you're doing as an individual you'll only achieve literal literal uh, and therefore I want to thank them for what uh, what they are, they are doing and uh, uh, teachers are very important because uh, like now what we have in our school, the resources that we have been given, we have been given the computers by the local companies, many resources. Uh, we have the internet. Yes, you can have these facilities, but without someone who is going to, you know, help these young people, how do you use the internet? Ensuring that this, this, the children are safe, then this will not help. And therefore that's where the teacher comes in. And I feel like 
uh, uh, teachers should be given more support in order for them to do what they are doing. Uh, they struggle, they, they sacrifice, they, you know, there's, they, there's a lot of dedication and therefore we, we, we have, we really need more to be given more support. And, uh, uh, and uh, I'm so happy with what the, in my country, the support I'm getting, the support that my school is giving me, the support I'm getting from all of us, even from the, the teacher service commission and the government, they have given me a lot of support until one, I was, one day I was asking myself, why is it that this is happening to me? And I feel like the same should happen to the teachers. The teachers should be given more support. And uh, at the same time, the teacher should be take, you know, the challenge of uh, learning. You know, each day is a day of learning. We, you know, there are so many learning opportunities and therefore uh, we should not just rely on what we learned when we were in college. And therefore uh, each day is a day of learning. Like I'm very sure at the end of this, I'm going to learn something. So take the uh, available opportunity to learn new things. And that's how we are going to cope with the so many challenges that the world is currently facing. And we'll be able to address them. We'll be able to unlock the potential of this uh, of the young generation. We can only do that if we are a, 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 we are flexible, we are resilient, and we are ready to work as a team. And we are very innovative. And uh, I think that uh, there's so much that we can give as we try to transform the world. Thank you, Peter. You've spoken with such a growth mindset. And I know we always say that teachers must encourage children to have a growth mindset. As you've traveled around the world, um, you will have seen and you will have experienced in your own country the effects of COVID, which have been devastating in, in so many countries and in particular in education. Uh, what, have, what challenges have you experienced in, in your own school? And also what have you encountered around the world that has been inspiring in terms of coping with these challenges? Okay, thank you. So I can say that we didn't, we didn't know that uh, like COVID-19 was to come the last year, 20, 2020. That's when we had the news that this is, this is uh, you know, uh, it came, it started from, uh, I think from one country and then you know, we thought it's something that is going to disappear. We had no idea that it will even reach us here in Africa, in my country. We don't we didn't have an idea. We said ah, this is some that's something that will just disappear after maybe a few a few weeks, a few months. But then after some months, we got it. It's here. It's here in my country. And then after a few months, it's here in my even in my own village. So, I think that it, it is something that uh, really changed our our lives. You know. We had worries, what is it is happening? Even my students were like traumatized because they have never seen that before. They were wondering, there are so many fears. And uh, after the school, after the school crushes, and there was a lockdown, there was no learning. My students had to go home and there was no learning. As teachers, we had to stay at home, <laughs> you know. At the end of the month, I could see my base sleep. Yeah, the salary is coming, but I'm not doing anything. I'm just at home. I don't know. Just doing my own work at home, but I'm not in I was not in touch with the students because there were no ways of reaching. By that time we didn't have the internet, the students, then right now they don't have in their homes, they don't have the 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 those devices. So it was hard for, for me to reach out to them. So there was that disconnect and uh, 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 the students were also affected because of that company, that great interaction which we used to enjoy before. And uh, because of that, uh, I think it's because of that boredom uh, we had in discipline cases at home. Now that the students were at home, we had the in discipline cases like drug appeals, and even there were cases of uh, teenage pregnancy and uh, theft. You know, the students lacked what they used to enjoy at home, at school, you know, like guidance and counseling. So, which they didn't have at home, uh, you know, at home. And um, also we, we tried, you know, we tried to reach out to them, but it was very expensive, you, you know, for you to reach out. The only way is maybe by through social media or through, you, you, you have to be connected with them. You have to have the internet and all of that. 
And that was not possible because it was very expensive. It was very expensive. But myself as an individual, I tried my own creative ways. I, I, I got the locals mobile phones and then I was buying for a few students uh, weekly internet panels. And I was able to reach out to some of them. But the whole thing is like changed everything. It changed everything. Uh, because even the, you know, what we thought were not needs right now, they are needs. Like now we, we have to ensure that there is, you know, in terms of uh, uh, water, we have to invest more in water because that's, you know, it will enhance uh, uh, hygiene, proper hygiene in the school. And uh, therefore, we, it's like it much that we need more, more, uh, you know, have more this some of these learning resources like ensuring that there's enough water in the school and that, that the classrooms are not crowded and then uh, you also need the ict facilities you know there's something to some people it was not a priority uh, integrating ict was not a priority but right now the same people who are against integrating ict they are saying that it's a need in fact the same people are now it's like they're the ones who are in the forefront of promoting uh, you know, uh, 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 remote uh, learning through, uh, you know, uh, uh, use of technology and so on and so forth. And therefore, I feel like we, we, are, we are now, we're doing something, but we hope that, uh, we have hope that regardless of these challenges, we hope that, uh, uh, you know, we have hope that, uh, you know, things are going to be okay. And then after going around the world, I feel like my perception about, you know, about people changed. I used to, you know, wonder how someone in the in the, in China or someone in the U.S. are they different? You know, I, you know, I didn't, I, you know, I thought there were differences. But after now moving around the world, I feel like uh, uh, I learned so much, and they also taught me that we are all one people. We are all, uh, you know. Uh, you know, we are all like global citizens. We we are all, regardless of the differences, we are all, you know, we are all uh, people of the same. You know, we are all, you know, we are all human uh, human beings, and uh, therefore there was no need to fear. I used to have so much fear. How, what am I to tell the people in the US? What am I to tell the people in the UK? All the people in uh, there's a time I, I came to South Africa. What am I to say? But now after interacting with them, I feel like. We we literally my, my, my you know that kind of um, uh, my, my confidence you know I have that confidence and I, I've seen that all the people are great and we can do great things when we have that mind that we are all uh, we are all the same uh, people yeah. Thank you for that, Peter. The, you know, people talk about the Valky family, and I do feel as though through this Global Teacher Prize we have become an international family of educators. I. I'm so struck by the bonds that this teacher prize has created in terms of sharing expertise and sharing projects. Um, it's been so exciting to be part of this global family. And I must say this year, the, the Vaki Foundation um, asked a group of us to be judges. And um, so just on one level of judging, and I had about 30 applicants to go through and and grade and I I found it a deeply humbling experience because just to read the applications and the challenges and the extraordinary things that people are doing in every tiny little part of the world and you you get such a sense of this power of transformation through education reading these individual case studies it is, it is an, a phenomenally um, privileged position that we find ourselves in. Um, and and um, before I ask you your last question, I just want to say, Peter, as a, um, you know, we had a, we had a past president who used to talk about the African Renaissance and how important it is for Africa to take its place in the world. And just listening to you in terms of your, your sense of, the children, your sense of education, your sense of environment, your sense of uplifting people out of economic poverty. For me, that really is what it will take to create our African Renaissance. And um, 
At the time, I don't think as a politician, he felt the Renaissance would come from education. But listening to you, I, I truly believe it. I've been doing a lot of work around the sustainable development goals and just getting a sense of how it starts in the classroom. And, and then, as you say, moves beyond the classroom walls into the community and the power to transform lives. So thank you for being our Renaissance man. And I, I, the last question I have for you is, what message would you give our aspirant teachers that are listening to you today as they embark on their professional journey as educators? Sorry, a question, please. May, may, I, I beg you, your your message, your... Sorry. So what would your oh. message be to these aspiring teachers that are listening to you today? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I can say that uh, all of us have say, said that we have a we have a role to, you know, a contribution to make to the society. And uh, let's do our, what we are doing, we give the best. You know, it's not about going for the, you know, top positions. We start with where we are as teachers. We, we don't have to, you know, go for these high positions. Just doing the ordinary work, giving it the best. The, with passion, with dedication, with the, you know, with that commitment, and uh, at the end of it, you are going to make a difference. So you start with what you are doing, give your best, and maybe you do it not because not because you have to do it. Yes, you can do it because uh, uh, let's do it because it's you know it's something that is going to change the world, and it is you know it's our duty, and that. We all, uh, you know, we, we, you know, that's, you know, that's, uh, and uh, we, we, there is so much that we can change. You, you know, there's so much transformation. And therefore, uh, that's what I can say that we all have a role and let's go for what we have. We do it with our dedication and we'll be able to make a difference. We'll be able to transform the lives of the young people and the challenges that the world is currently facing. I'm very sure we'll be able to solve them together if we are ready to work as a team, collaborate with the, everyone around us. Uh, you know, if it's you are in school, school administrators, the colleague teachers, and then uh, be ready to be innovative. Of course, at times there are so many challenges and you don't have enough facilities. Therefore, it requires you know a teacher to be creative and also instill that creativity in the students. But the most important thing is to be ready to change, to be flexible. Uh, otherwise, you know these new realities and the, the challenges that we are facing. If you are rigid, you want to stick to you know the traditional practices and styles. I'm very sure it will be so hard for us, and therefore. We should have the flexibility and the resilient. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. It's just been so wonderful talking to you um, in Kenya. And I'm going to hand over to Jeremy. I think he's going to um, ask you possibly to answer some questions. Jeremy, from the audience. Well, Marge, thank you. Please stay on, Marge, as well, Peter. Thank you for your time uh, today. Uh, what an inspiring uh, conversation to listen to, Marge. Thank you for, uh, uh, for leading that. Your commitment to serving those people that you teach and lead, Peter, is extraordinary. You personify the very concept of servant leadership. I'm not sure if you're able to read all the messages in the chat. There, there are a whole host of them coming through. Uh, Peter, there were two that jumped out. The one is, this is a once in a lifetime experience for me. That's one of the uh, students who listening said that. And another said, it feels surreal to be learning and hearing from these two incredible educators. So just two little bits of uh, uh, feedback. I'm, I'm gonna ask, uh, uh, Iviwe. Iviwe, if you can hear me, won't you uh, just turn your video on and come and join us uh, in this space? Uh, Marge, Iviwe has got a little something to say to you in particular. Hi, Marge. Um, I just wanted to say, like, uh, this whole experience took me back to um, 2018 um, in my selection camp in Libone. Uh, which is where I, I got to, you know, meet you for the first time. 
And you were just talking about your classroom and being a history teacher. I remember you even presented the whole concept of the uh, South African Society for History Teachers. I went and checked that out. You spoke about a mission-driven history class, understanding that there's no absolute objectivity in the teaching of, of history, but we need to cultivate an environment where our learners are able to think freely and to present as much as possible a proper or real um, uh, uh, presentation of the history of our country and um, how we need to be intentional in the way we teach history and not have topics we avoid. I think you even spoke about South, Af South African history sometimes taking lesser preference than um, European history in, in, in certain schools. So that really inspired me to become a, a history teacher, you know, wow. uh, and th through that I, I kind of bug got me a bit I, I read more about it and i've been like trying to speak to other history teachers you know just because i had spoken to you so i just want to thank you so much and that your impact has really far spread um beyond your classroom even to other people and potential teachers oh uh, Iviwe, what a wonderful feedback to give thank you and i i just want to say look out for the the, the new um south african history teacher society conference it's online this year, so check on the website. It's the call for papers has just gone up, and um, I really hope to see you on screen there. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Ibiwe. Um, Marge Ibiwe is in his third year studying at GCT. Uh, he even has a, 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 a post at a local school. He's uh, teaching at Westerford at the moment, so uh, you've certainly impacted somebody. Um, as, I, as I said in the chat, uh, those listening, um, we're going to have a chance to offer uh, to come on screen by unmute uh, by uh, uh, turning your video on and uh, either to offer a piece of precise praise. The way that works is that you would specifically say to somebody, thank you for and then mention the specific thing that you're grateful for. So Marge, thank you so much for the way in which whatever it might be, that's the, the, the precise praise. Or to come on uh, and, and ask a question, either of uh, Marge or of Peter. So candid fellows, uh, feel free if you'd like to take up that opportunity, will not you turn your video on now? If uh, that's wonderful, there's some, okay, let's uh, pause there for a moment. Christian, take it away. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, it's so great to see you. Um, uh, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to ask Peter, um, how did your faith um, affect your teaching outcome and your inspiration to help others? Um, since you're such a um, religious and devoted man, uh, how did it affect your teaching? and your drive to help others. Yeah. Thank you, um, uh, Christian. I want to say that uh, faith has really contributed to my, you know, what I'm currently doing. As I said at the beginning that uh, I was brought up in a family, you know, a Christian family with the, who believed in a, uh, in the, 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 the moral values of, you know, of humility, simplicity, uh, uh, be, be perseverance, respect. And uh, right from the beginning, my own father was uh, a strong, you know, a strong Christian man. And I think that influenced me because I was in that family. And uh, I obeyed, I recent, you know, it's you have to be obedient and I, uh, you know had to be humble in this just in the in in the same food uh, you know footsteps and uh, i think that has really helped me a lot right from the time when i was young and my you know my goal was to ensure that i have the humility i'm simple i'm working hard i re listen to other people i respect them and uh, and uh, all the time i've ensure that I have to be who I am, no, not changing and I have to stick to my Christian principles. And that's what has helped me a lot. I'm very sure I could not have, uh, you know, achieved so much what I've done if I was not sticking to my, you know, my Christian values and my faith and my, you know, all of what I learned from my, my family and what I was, you know, what I learned from my teachers. And therefore, uh, following the this you know my faith has uh, enabled me to do what i'm doing do it well if i'm teaching teach well not just teaching but even yeah 
teach better and even go beyond the classroom teaching and even uh, uh, have more, you know, uh, do it with dedication and commitment and all of that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much for that, Peter. Thanks, Christian. Tabiso, do you want to go ahead? Um, hello, I uh, hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I just want to thank Peter for what he emphasized about saying how important it is to build a relationship with your students because that is an inspiration for me because that's the type of teacher I want to be. I want to be able to build a relationship with my students where they can rely on me and where they can confide in me when they need to talk or anything like that. So I just want to thank you for emphasizing the importance of that and mentioning ways in which I can achieve that as a teacher with the students I will teach one day. So I just want to thank Peter very much for that and for everything that he has said and for the session that you have just given us. It's very impactful and I really do appreciate it. And I think it's going to help me a lot in my future as a teacher. So thank you so much. Thanks, Tabisa, for that uh, um, precise praise. Really appreciate that. All right, let's see who else uh, who else would like to join. Gugu, there's another one. Hi. Another. See if you want to join, please to feel free to uh, turn your video on. Otherwise, uh, Gugu, over to you. Um. So for people in the interview, you mentioned something quite interesting to me. And maybe you can uh, clarify uh, where maybe if I got it got it wrong. You said something about um, you prefer to help others more than you are. I find that very uh, selfless. It's amazing, um, but also a little bit conflicting at some point. I mean, over time we've learned is uh, take care of ourselves and put ourselves, you know, self care. Um, can you explain your process in you've put others before yourself, but where do you come in for yourself? Oh, thank you for such a wonderful question. Uh, I can say that uh, 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 it's a very challenging question. Yes, uh, I can say that, you know, uh, that they say that church begins at home. Yes, and that, that, that's uh, that's uh, that's very that's very true. Um, you, you start with the peace, giving yourself peace, learning. You know, ensuring that you 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 are able to develop. When you are peaceful, you have peace in yourself. You have love. You are with yourself. You have peace. That's when you'll be able to share the same love with others. And therefore, I believe that it starts with you. You can't preach peace if you don't have peace in your heart. And I believe you said, and that's what I've been uh, doing. And now by, by the time when you go out to reach others, you are able to give the best because already you have it in yourself. And uh, when I see others shining, like my students, I see them shining even beyond the, their village, beyond their country, and they have done so much. It gives me the joy. And therefore, it's not that they are, yes, it's not that they have succeeded. Yes, they have su succeeded, but when I see them succeeding, it gives me a lot of joy. So it comes back to me. <laughs> I feel so proud to see them succeeding. So you see, at the end of it, I'm not forgetting about myself. It gives me that happiness. It comes back to me. It started with, it, it, it started with me, I gave them, and then it comes back to me. And therefore, at the end of it, I think it's more of, an interactive way, it's a kind of a mutual way and uh, and it's a great way um, uh, of really being in the in the society and giving that contribution. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gugu. Thanks, Peter, for that uh, wonderful response. Um, as Gugu turns off her video, um, I think we probably have time for one or two more. Are there any candidate fellows there who are like to turn on your video and uh, um, either offer some precise praise as to be so did or uh, ask a question. My goodness, surely not. Hey, oh, there we go. Carla, 
and Twarelo. Carly, you go for it first. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. And Swarelo, please come back, switch your video on. I, I can't miss this opportunity to ask um, a, a, a powerful question um, to both Marge and, and Peter, and you can decide who would like to respond. I'm a teacher myself, um, and, and while I also position myself as a community leader, I'm very much in the background. You know, I, I want other people to take the, the spotlight. I want, I want my students or anybody I'm dealing with to, to be able to step into themselves and into the spotlight to some degree. How how does it feel to have so much attention as a teacher and 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 and, 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 and to some degree the humility aspect of being in a position of influence as yourself? And open to you, uh, Marge or Peter, how, how do you deal with the level of attention um, on your work and on your impact on communities? Thank you. Okay, uh, it can start. Uh, can I can also start, and then maybe like March can also give her uh, own views. So thank you for such a challenge, a very good question. And I can say that it has been uh, the way you have put it. It has been hard for even for me. It's something I was not used to. Uh, I wasn't getting all this recognition. I used to be just doing my own work, and uh, very few people knew about what I was doing or about myself. Even just within where I live, some people didn't know about me. But now after the this recognition, there are so many people now. There's so much attention. Even whenever I go to the nearby places, there are people are able to recognize me. And I feel like it's not. I'm not uh, okay at times. I'm not happy. I'm not comfortable. It's you know. It, it, it's like at times you feel like your freedom is curtailed. And it's not, it's something that I have to get used to, to with the time. It's not something that I can say that I'm really, I was used to. But I'm, take, I'm taking advantage of this in this, in a positive way in that uh, those people who are willing to help whenever they, they are in contact with me and they, they have capacity to help, I request them if they can come back to their community or what, is it something they can do to the community and have, I've received so much, you know, response, uh, feedback from those people, and they are doing so much. And that's why I've said that so many, the main challenges that our school was going through have been addressed in terms of uh, ICT, in terms of classrooms, and in, uh, almost in, in terms of the uh, road work and all uh, infrastructure, and all of that has been has been done. And I'm so happy that that's happening, and that's what I really, uh, you know. Uh, that's what I, I want to, you know, I want to achieve. And I want to use the platform to inspire others and uh, to, you know, to put it, to clarify that it is a teacher who is being recognized. It's not about Peter Tabichi. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, a teacher who is being giving this uh, recognition, the teaching profession. And uh, uh, I'm so happy that uh, men have told me that they have been inspired. Many people come to me and they tell me, you have inspired me. And that's what it gives me the happiness when I see that the men have been inspired. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Carla, I'll just add quickly. I think um, what this being on this global platform does is it really links you to teachers around the world that are doing amazing things. And you become part of a network that can draw your students into these phenomenal opportunities. So my students are part of a global network um, sharing ideas with each other around climate action. Um, another group are on a, a global network talking about the, the importance of children in all policy making. Um, really mind blowing stuff. Um, you, you can't believe what's out there. And, and um, so, the trick is to keep your energy levels up so that you can get involved in all these remarkable things for the sake of the pupils to become a sense that they can be global citizens. But the import, as importantly, you need to draw in other teachers because it's not, as Peter says, about you, it's about the teaching profession. And there will be teachers that you can share that stuff with within your environment. And there are other teachers who will just say, I'm too overwhelmed, I'm too busy. And it's as much as teachers can do to keep their lives together. And we're all in different spaces. 
Um, as Peter says, he doesn't have a family. Um, I'm lucky age-wise that my children, I don't have little children at home, particularly now with COVID. I'm so aware of that teaching. I think it's making the most of your particular position, but trying to be inclusive and open up to other teachers and, and, and just share this platform as much as possible. And some will take the opportunity. And, and I think that's how change comes about. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for that question, Carla, and for those lovely answers. Shwarero, would you like to uh, unmute and, and uh, uh, share your question? Yeah. Um, good uh, afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, am I audible? Oh, all right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from my side, I mean, like, I'd like to say thank you so much to um, Mr. Peter and uh, Mach Brown. I think I'm just, you know, astounded and astonished by what you all have achieved and also the, the knowledge and the wisdom that I'm receiving right now. Uh, my question goes specifically to Peter, but also um, Mach Brown, if you would like to also come in, please. Please do. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Peter, you are like the best epitome of that amalgamation and the integration between uh, community work and teacher work, uh, specifically home visits. How important are home visits? Because I remember one of my best teachers in high school, they did not only understand me in the classroom, but they went home, they got into my home, they understood where I was living, they understood what I did after school, they understood what I did on Sundays and weekends. So how important is that? And do you think home visits are only applicable to the developing countries or also to private schools as well? So I want you to expand on that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I can say that it's good to get in touch with the with the with the with the students trying to understand the uh, what they go through uh, you see just meeting them in a classroom seeing them interacting with the other children cannot give you a, uh, the exact picture what they are going through uh, but unless you go to where they come from see where they stay what they go through that's when you'll be able to understand them and even be able to help them better but uh, without that, I'm very sure you'll only be just uh, doing little. And uh, I think that's what inspired me to uh, uh, try as much as possible to create time for them. And, but unfortunately, it was hard for me to create the, get that time because most of the time I'm supposed to be from Monday to Friday after being in school. But I could create time in the evening, all over the weekend, and uh, also over the whole day. So I could feast uh, in one week, I could feast two or one. And uh, whenever that's happening, I was seeing that it was enhancing the relationship. And uh, whenever you come, they come back to school, it's like I see a different student all together. And uh, that you see their level of discipline, uh, you know, it goes up whenever I tell them they, are, they can listen very fast. And uh, I, I think it's a great way of enhancing that, uh, that, uh, that friendship. And uh, also you are able to understand what these children are going through and they open up even you meet their families and the families are able to share with you what the students were not, was not able to share when you are with them in school and uh, and therefore i think it's a great way of not only enhancing the relationship between you and the students but also even between you and the parents and uh, you know you become like a family and uh, I feel like learning is not just only happening, it should not just happen in school, it all starts from home. So you agree with the parents that this is what you can do and the parents will be able to listen to you. So it's like it becomes a teamwork and you see the, even the performance, the discipline and everything, you see the students, you know, uh, really improving in terms of their discipline and in terms of their performance. And uh, some of the students, many of the students have uh, helped in that way. I've seen them doing great things. So uh, even uh, actually the students who went all the way to US for an international competition in STEM. And that's, that's, the, that's the trick I was using. And then uh, we was, right now, there's uh, another student who is in the US, got us a full scholarship to study in the US, was also getting the same kind of support. And 
it's like between the family and all of that, there's that very good uh, relationship that even after finishing, after graduating from their school, they are, we, we still keep in touch right now. Right now, they just I was uh, speaking with them last, just yesterday, and they told me that they have already gone for whole day and they'll be putting back in uh, mid, mid, uh, mid this month. This is August, yes, mid this month. So we, um, we, we are like, it's something that's beyond just the school we become, there's that kind of, uh, you know, uh, really, uh, that can say that kind of, you know, togetherness and it's a great way. And uh, I'm able to use some of them. I take them back to, you know, I invite them to also talk to the my current students. Uh, those who have done so well, they are able to inspire my, my you know, the, 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 my, my, my current students. And I've, I've like just a month ago, uh, one of them was able to speak to the, to the other students and uh, through Zoom and it was a great way. The students were really motivated. And uh, I think it all started from that, what was built, just home visit, parental involvement and uh, trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, reaching out, you know, reaching out to the students and uh, trying to understand what they are going through. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Much. you want to add on? A Quickly, Swarelo, thank you for that question, because I think it's really important, and in different contexts, different things are possible, but it's that human engagement that's so important. And in our school, which is a very fast-paced, um, high expectation by the parents, um, it's, it's, it, could be, it can be quite daunting to um, know how to reach out to the parents when they are often putting a lot of pressure on their own children in terms of achievements, et cetera. And I think during COVID, the, the high levels of mental stress have been evident. And it's been so important as teachers to be there for the students, to, to know which students are really taking strain academically or emotionally. And, and just not, not um, provide that same um, academic expectation. I think we spoke, you know, Peter spoke about being flexible. And I think COVID has really pushed us to be very, very flexible, not only in things like technology, but also in terms of how much do you expect of a student that might really be taking strain at the time. And I think that's been so important um, at this point in time to have a real sense of each and every person in your classroom and what they're going through. Thanks. Thanks, Marge. Thanks, Peter. Thank you to candidate fellows who uh, came and asked questions. Oof, our time has run away with us. I'm in trouble for uh, being late already. So Marge and Peter, thank you for being gracious uh, with that. Such a lovely um, uh, thought to end up uh, on the, the idea of the critical centrality of relational work uh, in, in terms of what we do. Um, this morning, our uh, uh, speaker reminded us that transformational leadership starts with heart connection. And both of you have spoken uh, to that right now, the, 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 the centrality of a heart connection in the work that we do. I almost uh, three days ago, couldn't believe we'd get to this point of getting to the end of our summit. It's been three amazing days for us. Um, as a community. And uh, Marge and Peter, you have been incredibly generous uh, in your time and your wisdom in bringing us to a point of conclusion. Our theme this year for Summit uh, was Disrupt Ed, innovating and leading with expertise in a disrupted education system. And we've spent three days exploring the different disruptive uh, factors that are changing the face of education and uh, highlighting some of the interventions and innovations that hold promise for sustainable systemic impact and focusing in particular on the people that are doing this work. And that's been the great joy for me is being able to listen to such a diverse range of remarkable people doing remarkable things and doing so with a community of JGF uh, candidate fellows and staff members who are committed in the long term to working in South Africa, more broadly across Africa, in tackling some of the biggest problems in our system. 
So Marjan Peter, thank you for joining us. Uh, candidate fellows, thank you for the role that you've played, the way in which you have participated. Uh, thank you to the JGF staff who have uh, made this happen. Uh, so many working in the back background in so many different areas that's allowed us to uh, have the experience that we've had. We're going to close the session uh, now. The uh, CorpGAN team will pop up a slide and probably put some music on. But I, I ask uh, the team, why don't you just leave the, uh, uh, the room open so that in the chat people can uh, reflect. Candid fellows, if you'd like to just reflect on one or two things that you feel you're taking away, that would be lovely. There were some jokes earlier on, I think after our first day, uh, Marge, you would know this, but uh, Peter, we, as a team, we survey everything all the time. We, we, we renowned for that. And some of our students are like, what? There's no survey after our Friday session. So students, the survey is on its way. Uh, we really need your feedback and your thoughts. Um, Paul's going to send you an email with the link. And uh, in the WhatsApp group, we'll, we'll connect the link as well. Um, and uh, so please take a little bit of time now just to reflect maybe write in the chat what uh, one or two takeaways from these three days. But uh, when you get access to the, um, uh, to the survey, please to do that. All right, thank you so much team. Thank you community. Thank you Marge and Peter. And uh, we wish you all the very best uh, for the rest of today and going forward. Go well. <laughs>